Right now, social media is the easiest, cheapest, and yes, fastest way for hackers and scammers to break into your home PC and corporate networks. They do this to scam you out of your hard-earned money, all by clicking on a link you shouldn't have. This is the absolute proven killer. Hi, I'm Terry Cutler, father of two young boys, internet safety lecturer, and certified ethical hacker. And in this free video series, I'm gonna show you why, and what it means to you, everyone in your family, your employer, or even your business. I'm not only going to show you how they're tricking you, I'm going to teach you what to look for so it doesn't happen to you a second, third, or fourth time. You'll also hear some feedback from a group of regular folks. These are people who are not technical at all. You see, in January 2011, I left a large software company called Novell to start my own IT security business. So I've had the last three years to look back on the last 17 years of my IT life, and I had a lot to look back on. So in those last 17 years, I've had the opportunity to help companies on the verge of bankruptcy because they lost all of their corporate data, and it was my job to help get it back. I've also helped individuals who are being extorted, and I also help parents and kids keep safe online. I'm talking about topics such as internet safety tips and tricks, cyberbullying, viruses, scams, dangers of social media, and how to spot fake profiles. I've also shown people how to use advanced Google searches to find information on themselves that they didn't even know was there. So what's close to my heart right now is how to get parents up to speed on technology to safeguard their kids. First, let me ask you a question. You're a busy person, right? You want to help your friends and family keep safe online just like you would in the real world, and you try to keep up with technology just as your kids blow right past you. You know what I'm talking about? And you've seen in the media all these mega hacks going on, all because someone innocently clicked on a link they shouldn't have, and they let the hackers right in through the back door, bypassing all their security controls. So, as a busy individual, can you tell me the last big, and I mean big, hack that didn't use a specially crafted email that tricked someone to clicking on a link? Exactly. And there's a reason for that. Now look, hackers and scammers don't want to waste time trying to break through firewalls and other security technology. I mean, why would they when all they have to do is send you an email in reply to something you posted online and trick you into clicking on that link? What you need to know is this. This same technique is being used to trick our kids into hacking each other's online social media accounts and sending out hateful or sexual content to the friends believing it came from the account holder. This has led to teen suicides, drugs, depression, and there's no stopping this unless parents, teachers, or law enforcement pay attention and get involved. You probably heard about this one. In February 2014, a 14-year-old girl in Italy jumped to her death after hateful comments were posted online on a website called AskFM. This is a site where you can post questions and many people around the world will respond. Well, she turned to the web for advice when her boyfriend left her and got many comments such as, kill yourself, nobody wants you, and you're not normal. So when she posted some photographs of the cuts she said she made on her arm, one commenter wrote, I hope one of these days you cut the main vein on your arm and die. Scary, isn't it? This is being called the crime of the future, but it's actually happening today. Most of these people would never say these things to someone else's face, but they would have no problems posting it online thinking they're untraceable. Now, I know you know this, you've seen it, but for whatever reason, you haven't really spoken to your family about it, or you haven't done anything at all. Maybe you think it's a fad, or you're gonna wait until other people do something about it. But it isn't a fad. Here's the first step you can take. Now, when I give seminars, I love to ask the question of how many in the audience know how to use Google? So all their hands get raised, but then I ask them again, how many of you really know how to use Google? So I'm gonna show you a quick trick right now of how you can limit your searches to specific information that you're looking for that you didn't even know existed. All right, let's have some fun. Let's fire up a browser and let's go to www.google.com. Once you're here, obviously this is where most people do all their searches, but the first thing I want you to do is go into your settings and change the search settings. You see here, we have filter explicit results set to on. This means that if there's any content that's not appropriate that's being searched for, it will not appear in the searches. Because we want to find information about ourselves online, we want to turn this feature off so we'll be able to see what's really going on. Then you want to click save. In my case, I'm just going to type in my name by itself. If I just do a search for Terry Cutler and click search, I end up with about 4 million hits. That's just way too much information to find out about somebody. Do you know how I would actually get more specific in this search? You got it, quotation marks. So if I end up putting quotes around my name, this will actually tell Google, look for exactly what's in between these quotes. So even if it's spelt wrong or whatever, it's going to search for exactly what's in between those quotes. So if I hit enter now, you'll notice that I dropped down to about 18,000 hits. So that's getting interesting now. So let's say you're looking for information about yourself and maybe you belong to a soccer team or you like to drive the kids to school. So you want to type in something about you that you think would be public. For example, sports or soccer. 
So I've seen a situation where you might be the soccer dad and another parent decided to build a website that had your name along with other coaches and their contact details. Well, the contact number was put there with his private cell phone number. So I just want you to be aware of this. So in my case, because I teach internet security, I'm just gonna type in the word hacker as an example. So as you can see, my hits have now dropped down to under 2,300 hits. Now, of course, because I do a lot of stuff in the media, I don't wanna see terrycutler.com because I already know about myself there. I only want to see information that maybe some other people have been posting about me. So I'm going to go here and start removing these searches by using the minus button. So minus terrycutler.com. This is going to remove Terry Cutler from the whole list while we continue removing other web pages as we go along. We'll remove Security Week, and then we'll just continue eliminating as we go along. This is how you would actually start looking for information online. Maybe type in your phone number, what school you belong to, where your workplace is at, any specific information that you think would be about you online. In a live workshop I did earlier in 2014, most of the kids didn't find much information about themselves online other than what a local newspaper who posted photos and some information about them because they belonged to a soccer team. But the trick is that these students didn't even know that information was there because a third party or some other person posted that information about them online. So by doing these searches, they were able to find this information. So it's very, very important that you look for personal, identifiable information about yourself, such as your phone number, your school, your home address, etc. Here's another example of how you never know who you're talking to online. Recently, this attractive woman added me on Facebook. I had no idea who she was, so I did a quick profile check. Here's how I did it. Now, for privacy reasons, I can't use the real picture for this demonstration according to the lawyers. So I'll use my own picture in this exercise, but you'll get the drift anyway. So the first thing I did was I saved the image to a folder on my PC. I then opened up my favorite internet browser and went to images.google.com. I then dragged and dropped the file into Google Images. So by doing this, Google will analyze the picture and tell me about who this person is. And it'll also show me any similar pictures on any other website. But what do you know? This image is being used on various other websites and shows up in 31 search results. This is the first step to your investigation to see if the person adding you is real. And this technique can also be used to see if anyone else is using your photos to create fake profiles. So be sure to check that as well. This method of fake profiling is just the beginning of what can lead to cyberbullying and other online frauds and scams. Ever heard of the scam where a friend of yours got mugged in Australia and is asking you to send him some money via Western Union? Alright, let's take a moment to talk about cyberbullying. Did you know the psychological and emotional outcomes of cyberbullying are similar to those of real life bullying? The difference is, real life bullying ends when school ends. This is something we're all too familiar with, but when it comes to cyberbullying, there's no escape, and it's only getting worse. Alright, let me run some facts by you, and bear with me, this is important. 43% of kids have been bullied online. One in four has had it happen more than once. 80% of teens use a cell phone regularly, making it the most common medium for cyberbullying. 70% of students report seeing frequent bullying online. 81% of young people think bullying online is easier to get away with than bullying in person. Types of cyberbullying have names such as flaming, harassing, outing, exclusion, impersonation, and stalking. And this is the real alarming fact that makes me as a parent think twice. Only one victim out of 10 will tell a parent or a trusted adult of their abuse. Yes, this is abuse. Still think as a fad? A phase? I know what you're thinking. The child can just easily delete his account and it'll all go away. The fact is, the conversation continues behind the scenes and he just doesn't get the latest posts. But I assure you, it's happening. This subject is so hot right now that laws are being passed to make cyberbullying illegal. But a lot of the parents I talk to don't even know what cyberbullying is. At this point, the only way to bridge that digital divide is for parents to become tech savvy and become familiar with the online world that their children are immersed in, period. So ask yourself, how does this happen? So cyberbullying allows bullies to avoid facing their victims. I'll bet you that because they don't see their victims' reaction in person, the cyberbullies may not realize how much damage they're actually doing. Before I start talking about how to deal with cyberbullying, what I'm about to tell you is important. Here's the thing, technology in the past has been a babysitter. We all hear that television is a babysitter and the interaction between the children and the TV has been passive. You sit down, you watch, you change the channel. But if a parent was in the kitchen and didn't like what was on TV, they'd walk into the room and change the channel. So the parent was being active. But today, with internet-enabled technologies, it's about the children being active. Now the parents, in many cases, have fallen behind this technology and have become passive, meaning they have no idea how to monitor, safeguard, or even keep up with what's out there. And what's out there may be a danger to your children. In fact, trust me, what's out there is already a danger to your children. 
So we already spoke about Ask.fm. What about Spillit, SaySo, Kick, Snapchat, or even Facebook? Not that being social is a bad thing, but as the rates of cyberbullying increases, more and more cyberbullying is happening through these sites. So these sites even may have great intentions. The question is not who your kids are talking to, but where your kids are talking. There's not just cyberbullying happening out there. Another very real threat to children are people lurking in the chat rooms who hope to lure our kids into having online sex or face-to-face -face meetings. So if you doubt the scale of this problem, log on to almost any chat room. So in my line of work, when I work with authorities, it takes an average of 10 minutes before being propositioned. So I won't talk about everything here because I won't give anyone the opportunity to harm our kids. But here's the really great news. You'll become equally knowledgeable as your children. You will become the expert. So let me ask you a question. If you had complete access to updated information on latest tactics in cyberbullying and how to protect your family from online threats, you think it would help? It would, wouldn't it? Of course it would. Because that's what I do. You see, I have an interesting job where I get paid to legally break into company computer systems and help these clients secure them before the evil hackers get in. So with that experience, I give talks and seminars to school boards, family groups, youth centers, law enforcement, governments, and companies concerned about protecting themselves online. After there's one thing I learned is that parents, teachers, administrators, council workers, youth directors, you name it, they feel they can't keep up with their kids when it comes to technology, which is why I created this series. So I want you to meet some cool people who've taken my course or watched my videos. I also want you to hear what they have to say. They're parents just like you and I. Check this out. Hi, I'm Barbara Niven. I'm an actress, media trainer, mother, and grandmother. Nowadays, we hear headlines all the time about internet security breaches. And we really need to start stepping forward and learning how to protect ourselves and our families and our companies. Well, when one of my Unleash Your Star Power media training clients, Terry Cutler, who is also known as the ethical hacker, showed me what he was doing, creating an internet security training course, I couldn't wait to watch it and then also to endorse it. He gives you easy how-to ways to protect your children from online bullying, all the way through to protecting your company from internet breaches. Can't recommend him highly enough. Check out his course. And Terry, it's been a pleasure working with you and thank you for what you're doing to make a difference to all of us. Hi, I'm Richard Tardif. You know, I've been following Terry for more than five years. I can tell you it's about time someone created a real course on internet safety. Look at it this way. We wouldn't allow our children to drive without a course, right? Why do we do it when it comes to being on the internet? There's definitely some cool tips and tricks you can use when you follow this course. We know there's a need to keep up with the dangers on the internet, but Terry makes it easy, and you'll always be one step ahead and safe while you're online. Thanks, Terry, for getting it done. Some say the internet is cursed. Viruses, scams, zombies, botnets, worms, Trojan horses, logic bombs, and social engineering, just to name a few. How much do you know about these things? Have you ever heard about them? Well, did you know they're a threat to you every hour of your day? Now look, there's a lot out there, but we can do this. So why aren't we winning over the cyber bullies, the hackers, and the predators out there? There's so much information out there that it's almost impossible to learn because when something's new and it works, it may not work in a few weeks or even a few days. But it doesn't matter because even by watching the next couple of videos in this free video series, you're going to learn enough to begin getting a handle on all this overwhelming internet safety stuff. But you know what the best part is? You don't have to scour the internet for the best information on internet safety. And there's a lot out there. And in this series of videos to follow, you'll see that I got your back. I know what you're thinking. What's the big picture here? What's the secret? The secret is, there are no secrets. Just things you don't know yet. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you learned a lot. So if you did, please do me the honor by providing me your feedback in the comments section below. And if you're into social media and sharing, there's some likes, some shares, some retweets, and some Google Plus One buttons on this page. Give him a thumbs up for me and I'll get to work on the next video and getting you the information you need to begin dealing with what seems to be an overwhelming problem. But it isn't, trust me. And if you're watching this video from another site, head over to terrycutler.com right now to keep up to date with the latest video series. Friends, we can do this stuff. I'll see you in the next video.